Hi, you're watching India Post Live, India's first web TV news conversation online. I'm Shivraj, and today we're discussing why women in India are smoking more than men. You too can join in on the conversation by logging on to IndiaPostLive.com. You can also tweet with us, hashtag IndiaPostLive. Right, a British medical journal has found that more women in India are smoking than men, a trend that is becoming dangerously large. And a lot of health experts and a lot of those advocating against smoking are worried that this could cause a lot more problems on ground. Let's take a look. Does looking at a woman smoke openly still surprise you? Well, it shouldn't. Not anymore. Recent research shows that not only is smoking decreasing in the developed world and increasing in the developing world, Indian women have now figured right on top in that infamous list, smoking. Female smokers in India are over 12 million more than any country except the United States. A recent study by Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation Project found the number of women smokers in India has increased from 5.3 million to 12.2 million within about three decades, while the percentage of male smokers has decreased by about 10%. Most women are surely aware of the high risk of cancer and low fertility among smokers, but the numbers only seem to be rising, and the trend is on the rise in urban India. Is it then due to professional pressures and increasing stress in urban lifestyle? Very disturbing trend there with the WHO saying that 80% of diseases related to smoking happen in middle and low income countries across the globe. Well, joining us in studio to discuss that is Amit Yadav, who is a law expert and an advisor to the Public Health Foundation and also Aditya Badwani, who is a presenter and journalist. And we also joined online by Rita Bella, who is the president of Jagrati at the Indian Cancer Society. Uh, Rita, a very, very disturbing report there and clearly uh, a concern for advocates like you on the ground. Sorry, you want me to add something to that? Yes, Rita, I'm asking you, it's clearly a great cause of concern for advocates like yourselves that, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, medical experts globally are saying that more Indian women are smoking than men. Yes, that's a new trend these days and it's actually, I want to say, it's really, very really harmful. Uh, smoking anyway is bad, for uh, whether it's a male or a female, but if it, it, it affects the female very badly because uh, maybe the organs are uh, more delicate, uh, and then uh, there's uh, more risk to uh, some sorts of cancers, like cervical cancer. You know, it adds the risk. So it's not really good. Uh, earlier, we used to be worried about secondhand cancer uh, when a woman was pregnant because the husband was smoking. But these days, if a woman is smoking, it creates a lot of problems uh, during pregnancy. All right, Amit, why do you think uh, there is this trend increasing? And, and it's not just an urban problem. It's, it's now pan-India. The figures show that Numbers are just going up and up of women smoking. Why do you think there is this phenomenon happening? Uh, see, one is, uh, I think, with the time and uh, more access to uh, the global change, that's a globalization, and m more accessibility to the products itself and the affordability as well have increased over the period of time. And females also feel more, you know, in terms of the misplaced uh, 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 perception of independence and uh, you know, self-respect. Uh, I, like, I don't know how to put it that, in that context. But that is the way, and I think uh, more and more females in the urban and even the rural areas are uh, taking up smoking. The figures might not even be the real threat that is evident, because the threat might be a little more at put, you know, most of our, if you talk to uh, oncologists and others, they are saying, you know, the, the reporting itself, because if you go to the rural areas, there's a stigma attached to that if you find female smoking, so they don't even report. They don't even report the same that they smoke to the medical officers and, you know, and as, per, sure. as per the... Uh, a global adult tobacco survey which happened in 2010 in India, you know, more, th more than around 60% of the women who are smoking or who are using tobacco, they don't even receive or they don't even seek uh, you know, uh, assistance in terms of quitting. So that's a very uh, alarming sort Absolutely, of situation. Absolutely, because they say quitting is not something you just do, it's a whole yeah. process yeah. that's involved. And we'll come back to that as well. But Aditya, it's clearly a win-win for tobacco companies because we saw that uh, in the West, where tobacco companies were shut down with very expensive lawsuits against them by by pressure groups, by by, by a lot of cancer support agencies, mm -hmm. but here it's almost as if it's a reverse trend. Well, here you know we're always kind of 
one step behind the states in terms of development. There is a certain sense that we are aspiring to uh, the West in terms of um, a modern culture, let's say. Um, they did this in 68 um, in the United States when women were in fact getting to their own skins and having a say, having a vote, very much like it's going on now. That is in fact when Philip Morris came out with Virginia Slims. The Slim cigarette is marketed directly towards women. It's thin, it's attractive, it gives this whole thing. They got, we can't do it now because there's laws that prevent us advertising smoking, but they used to associate it with actors and high profile things. Now we can't do that so much, but the pressures of uh, women being empowered still exist Absolutely. And very much. Absolutely, you see much. how popular cinema objectifies women who smoke. There is a certain typecast and that is associated with yes. women as well, isn't that? Yeah, it's true. Um, there's a movie called uh, Colombiana, female lead, very strong, very powerful. Lays back, has a cigarette once in a while when she's done with a tough day of killing people. But you know, nonetheless, the association is there that you can very much chill out like a man, take it take you know, at the end of a hard day, do this. It's wrong, but that's their marketing that's tool, it. and it's an easy, easy sell for them. So it's all surrogate because they can't really directly advertise. Coming back to the legal implications, now India is signatory to the Global Treaty Against Smoking, 2005, yet we're unable to get the message across effectively. If you notice, very small sort of visualization on packets, very little being done on the ground stopping people from picking up that cigarette in public places? Uh, see, uh, India s signed the treaty and there's a law from 2003 which is a comprehensive in terms of restricts any, t any kind of tobacco advertisement of tobacco products, any kind of indirect advertisement of tobacco products, no uh, prohibition on uh, smoking in public places, no sale to minors. So all, the, all those provisions are there and India is uh, uh, actually one of the countries I think um, it's, uh, rare to have uh, uh, disclaimers at the movies also where and you know saying while there is a smoking scenes are there there's a depiction saying that it is injurious they also have audio visuals at the theaters before the cinema starts and in between also all said all said uh, there are violations and you see you know uh, uh, lead actresses in india as well as smoking and both in terms of as uh, you saying that in a tough role or even at the at a not so tough role but they want their lead actresses to smoke and which is um, you know again a very misplaced in terms of even if you see at the script and all it it doesn't look like that the the, the very demand of the script was that the lead actress should smoke. They also have surrogate indica indicators and even dialogues. A lot of songs, I know very recent, and even you know, the gestures and, and songs, they are around tobacco products. And so that those are the things. And again, you know, the, the youth, that's targeted towards the youth. So if youth and young people, so if, if you are showing that to the mainstream media, it is going to affect in terms of prevalence. So that's, I think, uh, cause of concern for the law enforcers and needs to be taken up. And it's a much larger issue, but we will come back to that. We're also joined online by Sonali, who works in a production house. Sonali, uh, is, you know, in, in high-stress jobs like yourselves, clearly there are a lot of girls coming out of the office in the workspace and smoking. Why do you think that is happening? And speaking to peers, why do you believe a lot of women are refusing to put down the cigarette? Well, uh, you know what? I don't think that there are a lot of women out there who smoke. And uh, the whole point of your show is based on this um, supposed research done by this British journal. So I, when I found out about it, I went online and it is, did a Google search. And then I found out that this, uh, well, I don't know if this is the test you're talking about, but I found a test made by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, some kind of place in the US. And I found that they, they, they conducted this longitudinal test from 1980 to 2012, and what I did was I checked up statistics every 10 years. And I found that from 82 to 2012, the number of women between the ages of 20 and 24 who smoke has actually come down. So when you talk about the fact that uh, the number of women, the number of women smokers has gone up, I wanted to find out which age group is this. So I looked at that, and uh, I looked at statistics again every 10 years from 82 to 2012, and I found that the age group in which this number has gone up is actually the same generation. In 82, it started with uh, the age group of 55 to 64, and it has ended in 2012 with 75 to 79 years old. 
So that is the age group of women who are smoking the most. And I don't know what you have to say, say about this. If you want to talk about Western influences, new... No, so, new uh, no, no, so, so let's, let's not get uh, bogged down by just this report because there's a lot in, in the WHO literature that says that 80% yeah. of the middle and low income countries is where smoking is most prevalent and the most vulnerable remain women, whether it is passive smoking or whether it is actively smoking and surveillance is an issue in countries like India where reach and where, where people don't admit to the habit of tobacco consumption. Well, um, okay, so do you mean that uh, the number of women who smoke in uh, low and middle income companies are more than the number of men who smoke? Yep, they say that they're the most vulnerable group so not even counted in very often. Well, I, I really don't see it. I mean, I don't know if you see it. Do you see women smoking more than men? I really don't think so. And well, you know, if you to... work in production houses and television companies, I think, um, you know, working in those, you do see a prevalence of a lot of women stepping out to have that cigarette. But, okay, we, we, we'll, we'll leave it at that, that Sonali. And you have a point uh, to make, and I think that's no, a very I'll, crucial I'll, point I'll, I'll, that Sonali is making because the statistics are sort of skewed to a certain age group. See, it is it is not, and I think she is referring to one of the study this, which is there. The study also says that the percentage has not increased. So it was around, let's say, 3% at that point of time. Today, it also, it is 3%. But actual number, even if you say the percentage of people smoking at that age has not changed, but if that remains stagnant, the num actual number of people smoking at that age is increased. Absolutely, so, the so absolute yeah, number absolute increase number increases because million. from if you if you see the population rise of India from 80 to 2012, it's enormous, right? So I think that absolute number increases. With females, in in if you look at the trend, so male smokers they have reduced 10 percent. Female smokers are at that stage but itself. But Sonali's point was that they're looking at generations from 82 till now that are of a much older age. No, I, it is it is not, it is immaterial because I, I understand that if a generation which have picked up smoking in let's say 80s and, and let's say 90s also when the law was not there and, and awareness campaigns was not as much as they are now and direct advertisement is not there. So that might have affected, so that number is still here. So we are looking at, so now increase in the rate, uh, rate of smoking and then there will increase in the rate of deaths as well. So at this point of time, more males are dying because of smoking than females. So that's not the point saying that female are like less females die due to smoking because a stage will come when more females will also die because of tobacco use. Absolutely. And Sonali, um, just just take us through, you, you work for a production house. Is this an area where you see a lot of similar production houses around or you're just a, in, an, in a separate area itself? Because I'm a bit surprised that you have not seen the trend of more women smoking because when I worked in the production areas of Delhi where you see a lot of clusters of production houses operating, I do see a lot of people standing stepping out to have that cigarette. Yes, they do, but the number still remains less than the men. And, and okay, uh, so the place is, where I, I don't work at a place where there's a cluster of production houses. I, in fact, work at this uh, place that is full of corporate towers. And I will still say that I don't see any woman stepping out and smoking. In fact, one of my colleagues even told me that she avoids smoking only because of the social stigma. So there is definitely a social stigma that affects a lot of people. I'm not talking about the media houses, but a lot of other women. And that prevents them from smoking. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But that also prevents reporting and surveillance then. Yeah, it, it, it does. And the, the point is, I, it, I will just put, uh, you know, in, in, if you look at, the National Family Health Survey 2005 said that there's 10% tobacco use among females. And you have five years later, uh, global adult tobacco survey which says more than 20 percent of females in India use tobacco. Now that also I think is an underreporting because uh, you know, the survey is so designed that you go to a household and you ask questions the person at the house it, they respond. Of course not because the yeah. social stigma yeah. says so it's the, not good for yeah, women. So they might smoke. not know if, if the father is responding the father might not know even that the daughter is a tobacco user or not and so even if see, he knows that the daughter is a tobacco right. user he will not report to the person and, saying that my daughter is a tobacco and user. That's totally one of tobacco's best best um, selling points as a kid it's wrong you smoke here it's even more so especially uh, with women if you're from slightly more conservative background to smoke is not a good thing. It's again, it just leads you straight into the trap, especially from a younger age. And if you're, as you said, in a production uh, company or in a, a journalism job. or high stress job, 
it, and especially if you're in a position where I know you're it's actually my generation, a there were more yeah. women. Uh, Definitely. Than, than I mean, smoking, my, my team was, a show was predominantly f- uh, female at my, pa- at my past. Place. Okay, uh, just going back to uh, Rita Bhalla. Uh, Rita, you know, fr- from a perspective, from a health communication strategy perspective, it complicates what you do when you're trying to go out there and prevent cancer, doesn't it? Um, I didn't get your question, but anyway, I'll. Uh, uh, say what I have to say that uh, generally, you know, we have found that uh, we like to go to schools, uh, colleges, and tell them uh, all the harms of smoking. There are a lot of harms. Forty um, percent of the cancers which are diagnosed uh, are because of tobacco use and infertility so not... as well. I'm sorry, and infertility as well. So there's a much yes, a much larger also. danger. Uh, it is. It not only causes cancer; it causes a lot of other harms. One is the heart disease. It causes a lot of heart problems uh, and infertility. Of course, uh, the. Uh, All right, I mean, I think the the larger question of what the government or what policymakers should be doing. Uh, I think uh, the first step, of course, is surveillance and reporting, but. Prevention somehow seems to be an excuse of implementation by law enforcement agencies. And it's almost like a a catch-22 situation when either side says that they can't seem to implement what they've signed up for globally. Uh, See, uh, in terms of implementation, a lot of, like, the scenario has changed a lot. In 2003, when we enacted our own uh, Cigarettes and Other Tobacco Products Act, people were smoking in restaurants and the restaurants you could have seen there is a physical segregation so some uh, you know a very uh, you know there's no no actual segregation and people could smoke in the one section and there could be a non smoking section just across the in the same room but now you don't see that phenomena people, if people have to smoke they walk out of the restaurants and that's mostly i've seen in delhi and other metros you know, the, the things could be a little different at, at the uh, peripheral and rural areas. So that, cha- that has changed. But I, because if implementation size, if the government is doing something, there's a whole industry that sells this product. And the industry continues to do things which, see, which it can you know, so do through circumventing. Said, this government has said very clearly that they're going to increase taxes prohibitively on tobacco products and also going to ban uh, other kind of chewing tobacco right, products right. as well. But is that it's, much of a deterrent? It's not going to make a difference at all. Sorry, sorry to, 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 to jump in there. Uh, it's not going to make a difference at all. In, in the UK, when I was, I was there like, seven, eight years ago, it was at five pounds a cigarette. It's nearly 10 pounds now. 11 or 12. 11, 12, sorry. Yeah, it's more than doubled. It's not going to stop but anyone does, from smoking. Does, Once you're smoking, I'll, you're smoking. It should start at, if you ask me, it should start at home. Uh, the education, a government can say and legislate whatever they want. But the education is going to come from the people who you really do listen to when you're developing and when you're getting this sense of... And it's complicated because India I'll, is I'll the second you, or third okay, largest wait, tobacco uh, company. In terms of taxation, country. taxation, I'll tell you, it's, it's the biggest uh, tobacco control measure. If you increase 10% taxes, mm-hmm. there is bound to be a reduction of 3 to 4% of tobacco use. But is it a lull or is it a, is it a drop? It's... it's, it's it may be, may be a little slower, mm-hmm. but it is there. We recently did a, a price elasticity study, a public health foundation. We released the study on 6th June, mm-hmm. the findings. And it says if you increase 10% of uh, uh, taxes on cigarettes, there's going to be a decrease of 3, uh, three to 4% to 5% in India of cigarette consumption. And if you increase the same 10% in BD, then there is going to be around 5 to 7% of decrease in tobacco use. Like uh, beery smoking, so they are price elastic, and we, we are talking about in India. That's why the low and middle income countries, UK, could not be a very right kind of a uh, comparison for mm-hmm. India because that their uh, purchasing power and our you know, purchasing power in India and of the rural population is very different. Mm-hmm. And in India also, you see the high income group that's very limited in the urban areas or maybe some certain areas, while tobacco use is more in rural areas. So if you increase prices and increase taxes, it is obviously going to affect the consumption pattern and it is going to decrease. And the 7% uh, plunge in one of the major cigarette companies in just after listening to what the health minister has to say that there is, is going there should be an increase in taxation it's an indication, indication of that, of that. Uh, Rita what what is your communication strategy or your message that you that you work with when you go out on ground and try and target those tobacco related uh, communities 
Uh, generally, you know, I feel that it is the ignorance which leads people to uh, smoke. Uh, generally, if you target a person uh, before he is 18, 20 years of age and you tell him all the harms that the tobacco is going to cause, uh, most probably they'll listen to you. Uh, there's peer pressure, uh, which we tell them you should uh, learn to say no when you feel you are right. Uh, you should not feel that uh, just to feel uh, wanted in a group, you should start off with this habit. Secondly, don't hero worship people, uh, uh, at least the things uh, like smoking. If, if your father smokes, uh, don't think that it's the right thing that he's doing. You can pick up his good habits, uh, but not the habit of smoking. Uh, similarly, big film stars or somebody who are smoking, uh, don't emulate these habits. That's what we try to impress on them. Uh, and we tell them the harms. So when we tell them the harms, mostly they listen to us. And um, uh, I hope uh, that they don't take up this habit. So uh, uh, ignorance is uh, the biggest thing. We should educate people that it is so harmful. Uh, most of the time, they don't know. Secondly, they always feel it's a stress buster. Uh, while we tell them that uh, when you are under stress and you uh, start smoking, uh, your heart needs to work harder, your BP rises and your body uh, has to face more stress. So actually, it's not a stress buster, it's adding to your stress. So these are the three, four things that we tell them, and uh, we ask them to avoid this habit. All right. Uh, that, uh, your generation, now that you've come back to India, and you, you, know, you, you sort of mingle, uh, are these messages, are these sort of you know, advocating points actually taking place at, the, at home? Are, are parents actually sitting down with kids and having that very open, transparent discussion? Yeah, well, I'm certainly certainly in my house, I say, if, um, about seven, eight years ago when I told my parents that I was smoking, oh, well, not told I was busted in school, of course, as you would be. Um, but, uh, yeah, they were, they were always very, they were fine about it. They were like, we, we both smoke, but it's not a choice, but it's your, it's your decision. The decision is left up to me. That actually has, uh, let's say, allowed me to make a decision myself and giving me the freedom of that, rather than wave the finger and say, no, don't do it, it's bad. To actually say, all right, you're a mature, sensible person, Make, it kills, it really does kill, we do it, we're kind of stuck in a rut, but make your, make your choice, come to this conclusion on your own, do you want to have baby, if you're specifically with women, do you want to have kids before, uh, you know, it's too late or whatever, you need to get on board with this program. So the, I think the education needs to be, um, um, what's honest? It needs to be natural and, and transparent open. and open, like you said. But but then it's also complicated by the fact that tobacco companies in India are, are now bringing in a wider array of products. Um, even though there is a deterrent of 18 years, can't buy cigarettes. That's not implemented on the ground. Do you foresee in the next five to ten years, given that this government is making very clear it's going to increase rates? of taxation on the tobacco industry, that there is some movement towards the positive side? Uh, there is. We have a very, uh, I think, progressive health minister who is who is very receptive to things like this. He ha he himself is a doctor, so he knows. He's a, he's a neck and eye surgeon, so he, he knows uh, uh, what the problem is and where the problem is, and he has uh, written to the finance minister as well. So I think there this is there's a positive movement in the government. And if what is being proposed, what is being said, and if it translates, I think there is going to be change. Some measures which are also important is like you know, having graphic warnings which are, which are gross and which are more uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, which communicate more harms of the tobacco products to the people. So I, those are required. In, I mean, as you said, that selling to minors, I think uh, it, it should be made mandatory for all the people who sell tobacco to actually ask for the i cards of you no know, person who is coming if they suspect that the person is under the age of 18 years because it is very important scientifically and the behavior science says that if a person does not take up smoking or any a smoking or alcohol or that kind of habit by the age of 24 years it, he is not going to pick up that habit and it is not going to become his you no know, he is not going to be a habitual smoker no, that is why I think if you see in Delhi, the age of using liquor is 25 years. So that is why it is 25 years. Because if you can avoid alcohol by 24, if you avoid smoking by the age of 24, after, if you, even if you try after 25, it might not become your habit. Because at that, type, at that point of time, your mind becomes comp no, in terms of very strong and decisive. But uh, no, any, anything before 24, 18 or 17, 15, that's an age where once you pick something, it's going to last or remain 
right. longer with you. Okay, just some last words. Sonali, uh, we talk about access because in India, accessibility is is so freely available. You can go to any corner shop and pick up cigarettes. Do you think that restricting and implementing age restrictions will work? Definitely not. I know not a single person who has adhered to the 25 age limit for drinking or smoking or whatever it is. The more illegal you make it, the more kids will find ways to do it. All right. Uh, Rita, your views on, on the fact that there are on paper laws that say that no one is allowed to sell cigarettes to, to, to minors under 18. And yet you see a lot of kids sauntering up to corner shops and buying them. Do you think that with this government making very clear it's going to have a low tolerance policy for tobacco sellers uh, is going to make a difference? Yeah, first of all, you know, uh, uh, just uh, having a law won't help. We have to educate the people, even the person who is selling uh, cigarettes and tobacco, we have to educate him, uh, go and talk to him, okay, this is going to cause so much of harm uh, to a young child who will pick up this habit. Please don't do it, it's against the law, uh, listen to the law and don't do it. And secondly, if there's a penalty, of course, he'll be more conscious about it. Um, main is uh, educating the children. Absolutely. Uh, when they're 14, 15 years, the parents, the teachers should keep drilling into to them that this is a wrong habit. You will have to pay a big price in terms of uh, not only uh, um, wealth, but even health. So right. you have to keep drilling that in. Right. Into Absolutely. But capacity building, education, the kind of programs that we're talking about requires budgets. Are you hopeful that this government is going to set aside enough for healthcare or leave it to agencies like the WHO and like your agencies to, from the outset, keep pushing the message? See, it's, it's going, it should be and it is going to be, I see, as a collective effort from all, all the places. WHO invests in healthcare and you know, providing people assistance with that, it provides assistance to the governments in terms of better health facilities and all. We do, you know in terms of non-governmental organizations and public Advocacy health, and public health foundations like yeah they invest in educating people, creating awareness and all. Government of India is investing money in, in implementing the national tobacco control program and uh, currently 52 districts are 53 districts are under the program and it is planned that within this 12-5 uh, year plan they're going to be in more 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 and more districts and you know every year it would the number will increase and the obviously the budget will also increase every year so I think there is uh, there, there is commitment but I the thing is if at the grassroots levels and at, at the appropriate levels people are sensitized people are made aware and you no know, informed about the hazards of tobacco use I think then uh, the youth and the people who are thinking that they should, they are going to use, they can that make cool informed, yeah, if, if wrong. They, yeah, wrong, and they can make an informed choice that no, they, exactly this is, because this we've is got leading. a tweet, in fact, that said not only Hollywood movies, even Indian movies are increasingly portraying women smoking. Really worrying trend is Sri Shantu's, who's a retweeted night number 17's tweet to us. Um, it is something that we've got to really take a holistic look at. It's not just. A health issue. It's a cultural issue as well. Yes, it is a cultural issue. As I said, in 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 the rural areas, they will not even report that a female smokes. So that continues. So I think even as you said, the surveillance and monitoring and actual reporting of people, you no, know, having to, uh, using tobacco, and they going to the health advisors, so doctors and medical officers, saying that we use tobacco, and then you no, know, uh, seeking advice to quit. So I think that is important. No, the information should reach to the grassroots level. Okay, Aditya, last word. When you go up to a female friend who's smoking and sort of counsel them, what's the reaction you get? Oh, well, honestly, I'm not much of a counselor myself, but um, well, I, I wouldn't say I get much of a reaction now because I've never actually asked that question. For, I'm a smoker myself, so it would be quite a, a problem for me to do that. I wanted to touch a little bit on what we were talking about earlier, uh, just as my final point. Um, this thing of fixing it from uh, from the grassroots in terms of the retailers themselves, I think in India this is is a almost impossible thing. It's to a complex do. thing. It's a complex thing because the guy who's actually selling those cigarettes, the panwala, he's there, he's sitting there. He's how is he going to feed his kids? His main income is is the cigarettes. So the decision has to be made in the people themselves, where it has to come from within. No, they make yeah, the decision I, not see, to uh, buy it because how you, it's not fair no, then also that, to that's, ask him. That's that's again misplaced. He's not going to stop no, selling mis his mis cigarettes. That's a, that's a misplaced has to conclusion. Come from us. Cigarette selling is not the mainstream livelihood for retail vendors. That's not the mainstream livelihood. It doesn't get them more profit. 
you know, likewise, people think that the beauty rollers get more of money. It's a livelihood issue. It's not. But this is from your st st statistics. So no, I would did, like you to ask this to the guy himself yeah, and ask him what he we, thinks we, if he we, could we sell did, 10 we less did, packs we did a day. We did that research in two, two states and we find that it is not the major source of their income. I know people and I know uh, young people, let's say, you know, people who are 21 and 22 and asking for cigarettes. And I know vendors who have refused them because they look like less than 18. No, saying that, no, 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 you are not in uniform, but you are a school student, and they didn't sell it. So there are people who are refusing also. I know that, I know you know there, there are villages who, that are tobacco-free. In Noida itself, there, are, there is village which is you know, declared tobacco-free by the village heads and all. In, in Andhra Pradesh, where we did interventions of tobacco control, and we know around 10 to 12 villages, they declared themselves tobacco-free, and then they, they no, no, forget about cigarettes. They are not using any form of tobacco. So I think that... Uh, no, in terms, movement. Yeah, the movement. And I know that there's there are a lot of people now that they understand that this is harmful, this is wrong, and they need to quit tobacco. That is there. The, the problem, the worry is the industry continues to surrogately or somehow manage to be there and recruit more people. Absolutely. You know this is the only industry where half of its customers are going to die after using their product. Absolutely. So they need more customers every year. Right, so they need to. They need. They, they they think about new avenues to get more customers. Absolutely, and they're always very stealthily yeah. sending yeah. the message through so, film, through uh, uh, other means. Uh, through of, films, through, through film. direct direct, recru direct recruitment recruitments of customers at the colleges and you know, organizing uh, festivals and celebrations and youth festivals Absolutely. and things like that okay. at, to engage students and okay. you know, young so, smokers. So we're really running out of time, but I think it's a discussion that's useful and we should continue having because it's a larger cultural, social, economic and political question that we need to address. Do we really need uh, women in India to smoke that much more and be at risk? You can continue the conversation by logging on to our website indiapostlive.com. You can also continue tweeting with us, hashtag IndiaPostLive. Thank you for watching.